Welcome to the ADF Insider Essentials series, which demonstrates the essential skills, tips, tricks, and techniques that you will require for building ADF applications. In this demonstration, you will see how to configure your ADF mobile development environment for the Android operating system. I'm Frédéric Desbiens, a member of the ADF product management team. At this point, I'd like to remind you that Android is a trademark of Google and that the Android robot is used according to the Creative Commons 3.0 attribution license. Setting up your development environment is a four-step process. First, you need to install the Android Developer Tools bundle. Second, you must configure the Android simulator if you plan to use it. Third, you must configure your device if you have one and want to deploy applications on it. And finally, you must configure JDeveloper. Even on a recent iHand device, the deployment of ADF mobile applications can be slow. That being the case, you may choose to use the release mode in order to speed up deployments. This is an optional step that we will also demonstrate today. The first step is to install the Android Developer Tools. Please download them from the official developer site as listed on the slide. The ADT bundle contains two things. First, a pre-configured instance of Eclipse with plugins appropriate for Android development. And secondly, the SDK itself, which is mostly made of command line utilities. In order to install, simply unzip the bundle to a folder of your choice. Let's focus a bit on the SDK. If we simplify, the various tools it provides belong to three main categories. Obviously, it provides tools for debugging and testing your applications. The SDK also contains platforms there is one SDK platform for each version of Android. And finally, you've got platform tools. Those tools are updated each time a new platform is released, but they are backward compatible. Each SDK platform contains at least one system image. System images are used by the Android emulator and they match any of the supported processor architectures for that specific version. The relationship between SDK platforms and Android versions is not obvious. Platforms are numbered in a sequential fashion, whereas versions are following a different scheme. In addition, Android versions receive a nickname based on a sugary treat. For ADF mobile applications, the minimum SDK platform level you must target is level 9. This is Android 2.3, nicknamed Gingerbread. If you don't own a suitable Android device in order to test your applications, your only option is to use the provided emulator. The Android emulator is part of the Developer Tools bundle. Before using the emulator, you must configure it. This is done through the Eclipse instance that is part of the Android Developer Tools. To start this Eclipse instance, go to the folder where you installed the Developer Tools bundle and open the Eclipse subfolder. Once Eclipse is ready, simply open the Window menu and select the Android Virtual Device Manager option. In the Device Manager, you will select or create a device definition and then create an actual virtual device. Device definitions have their own tab in the Device Manager. By default, the list is populated by Google-provided definitions. You can use those directly or create new ones from scratch. You can also take an existing one and clone it. Device definitions are a template for virtual devices. 
they define most aspects of the device's hardware, such as screen size, screen resolution, sensors, cameras, input, and quantity of RAM available. When designing your application, you will probably target smartphones or tablets. Maybe you will target both. We recommend that you define as many devices as you need in order to validate all of your targets. Remember that a user interface that works on a smartphone maybe will not work as well on a tablet and vice versa. Remember also that something that works on a large iHand phone will not work on a smaller phone. Once you have identified or created a suitable device definition, you can create your virtual devices. This is done through the Device Manager on the Virtual Devices tab. Simply click on the New button. This will display the dialog shown on the right. There, you will give a name to the device and specify the device definition you want to use. You will also select the API level you are targeting. When choosing the CPU architecture, ensure you select ARM. The other CPU architectures are not supported at this time for ADF mobile applications. At the bottom of the dialog, you will see the section Emulation Options. If you have a discrete GPU in your computer, please check the Use Host GPU option. This will provide you a small performance boost if you have a supported graphics adapter. Once you are done, click on OK. Your virtual device is ready to use. To start it, select it in the list of virtual devices and click on the Start button. The startup process will last several minutes, even on a very powerful computer. This is because your computer is emulating a foreign CPU architecture. You must remember to start the virtual device before trying to deploy your ADF mobile application on it. As I have said before, the best way to test and debug your ADF mobile application is to use a physical device. In order to do this, your device must run Android 2.3 or higher. To use your device in that context, the only thing you need to do is to enable USB debugging on it. The steps to achieve this vary according to your version of Android. For older versions, you need to go to Settings, Applications, and Development. On Android 4.0 and newer, you will go to Settings, Developer Options. Please note that on Android 4.2 and newer, Developer Options is hidden by default. The steps to reveal it are indicated on the slide. This will probably not impact you until 2014, since typically the adoption of new Android versions is slow. Once USB debugging is enabled, simply connect your device to your computer using an appropriate cable. Please note that some devices will require you to install a USB driver, especially if you use the Windows operating system. Typically, you will find those drivers on the manufacturer's website. Most of HTC's newest phones, for example, require such a driver. On the other hand, you don't need to install such drivers if you use Apple's OS X. At this point, your devices are ready, whether they are physical or virtual. The only thing missing is JDeveloper's configuration. It is straightforward. Go to JDeveloper's Preferences, open the ADF Mobile category, and click on the Platforms subcategory. Then, in the list of supported platforms, in the right hand of the screen, click on Android. You must provide two pieces of information. First, the Android SDK location. This is the SDK folder that you will find inside the Android Developer Tools installation folder. 
you must also provide the Android platform location. This is one of the folders that we will find under the platforms subfolder of the SDK folder. In this case, we had level 17 of the SDK platform installed. Ensure that the SDK platform you are using is supported by ADF Mobile. If you plan to deploy applications in debug mode, please fill a password in the key and key store password field at the bottom of the screen on the debug tab. Your development environment is now configured for use with the Android operating system. If you use it as is, you will find that deployment times can be quite lengthy. This is why we advise you to use release mode in order to speed things up. To enable release mode, you need to create a self-signed digital certificate, configure JDeveloper, and specify release as the build mode. Let's have a look at the process of creating a self-signed digital certificate. To create the certificate, you must use the command line. The first step is to go to the binaries directory of a suitable JDK. We will now issue the key tool command. The first option states that we want to generate a key and key store. The dash V option specifies verbose mode, and we then enter the keystore name. A keystore is simply a file on the file system. Each keystore must also have an alias. We use the same name as for the keystore file. And we specify also the algorithm that will be used to generate the certificate. Here, we choose RSA. The key size is specified in bits. And the validity is in days. So this specific certificate will be valid for 10,000 days. The key store must have a password. Choose whichever you want. You must then give some information about yourself and your organization. If you're doing this at home, you can type anything you'd like. In this case, I work for the DevTools group for Oracle Canada. I work at the Mississauga office in the province of Ontario. I must now confirm everything I typed by typing yes. The command now generates the key store and the certificate. We are now ready to go. Once you have created the digital certificate, you can configure it in the JDeveloper preferences. Go to the release tab and type or select the key store location. You must provide the password and key alias you provided to the key tool command. The only missing step is to specify the release mode as the build mode for your application. This is accomplished by opening the deployment profile for your application. In the profile properties, click on Android options and at the bottom of the screen, select the release radio button. That's it for today's ADF Insider Essentials. Here are a few takeaways from today's session. First, remember that the Android developer tools are made of two parts, an Eclipse instance and a command line SDK. When testing or troubleshooting your application, use a physical device rather than the Android emulator. This will provide you better performance. Finally, use release mode in order to speed up your deployments. 
To learn more about the ADF and ADF mobile frameworks, please go to oracle.com slash technology slash JDF. I'm Frédéric Desbiens. Thank you for watching today's ADF Insider Essentials.